Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to write in water. So I have some water in this test tube here. Let's try to write in it with this blue dye here. Writing in liquid is tough. If you try to inject a dye into it, then it just swirls around and changes the pattern that you're trying to make. You can see how I can try to inject this blue dye very carefully, but it doesn't work very well. But what if I could use something that won't disturb the water, like light? This blue dye that I'm using here is actually called methylene blue, and it changes color based on whether or not it has electrons on it or not. So that means that I can change it from being clear or blue based on its redox potential. So if I add an electron donor like these tin ions here and change the pH with some acid, I can make it colorless. So what's happening here is the tin 2 plus ions have given their electrons to the methylene blue and made it colorless. But here's where it gets really cool. I can actually stimulate the methylene blue to react with the tin 4 plus ions to make the colored form again. I just need to give it some energy. And I'm gonna do that in the form of light. I have here a violet laser, 405 nanometer light. The methylene blue can absorb 405 nanometer light and it will give it enough energy to lose electrons and donate them back to the tin ions. So the methylene blue will now be blue again. But it'll only do it right where I shine the laser. So you can actually write in the water. If the water's perfectly still, then you can make a perfect line right through the water. You can even draw cool patterns on it. Because you can make these straight lines through a liquid, it's a really cool way to see the viscous boundary layer when you turn the container. And then as soon as I stop shining the light, the solution will eventually turn clear again because the tin 2 plus ions will donate their electrons back to the methylene blue. What's interesting about this reaction is that it's dependent on the frequency of light that you shine on it. So let's try shining some different color lasers on it and see what happens. And before we continue, I'd like to thank Finimize for sponsoring this video. Finimize is an app that helps you become a smarter investor in 10 minutes per day. It delivers all the insights and tools you need to make smarter financial decisions. I've been using Finimize to help me make smarter investing decisions. If you've been watching the stock market recently, you know that we can use all the help we can get. One thing I've learned from this app are the ways in which the recession is different than previous recessions. One of my favorite thing about the app is that with all the articles you read, you don't have to actually read it, but you can listen to it as well. I love that the financial advice that you get on the app is unbiased, so you don't have to deal with political incentives. Also, you can pick up easy to use strategy from in-house experts and world-class analysts who previously worked for Goldman Sachs, HSBC, and Barclays. Also, they make it really easy in the app to spot under the radar opportunities in tech, stocks, personal finance, and more. You can also connect with thousands of smart investors in private groups and live events. So if you want to try Finimize and become a smarter investor in minutes, click the link in my description box to get a seven day free trial of Finimize and 40% off. Now let's get back to our experiment. So you can see that when I shine my violet laser on it, it easily turns the solution to blue wherever the lasers shine. But if I use any lower frequency, it doesn't work. For example, you can see if I use red light, it doesn't do anything. or even if I use a bright green light. But when we get up to the blue wavelengths, you can see it starts to turn it a little bit blue. But if I just use this violet laser again, it turns blue. So we know that anything with 405 nanometer violet light or higher frequency should be able to turn the solution blue. And I actually happen to have an ultraviolet light bulb here. So let's shine the light bulb on the solution and see if it turns it blue as well. And sure enough, it looks like it turns it all blue. And what's really weird about this reaction is that normally light will do the opposite and turn the methylene blue colorless instead of turning it blue. 
through photo bleaching. So if you actually use the lower wavelength light, it will turn the solution clear instead of blue. You can see this a little bit when I turn the solution blue with my UV light and then shine my red laser light. On the spot that I shine my red laser light, it turns clear faster. This is because the methylene blue absorbs red light really well, but it will also do it with other colors as long as it's below this violet frequency. Also, in order for this reaction to occur, it has to be a liquid so that the molecules have enough energy to bump into each other and get the electron transfer to occur. So if I take a dropper of this solution, you can see that when it's in its liquid form, I can still turn it blue with the violet light. But if I freeze it in liquid nitrogen, it won't change color anymore. As soon as we start getting some liquid in there, then it will change color again. So it is possible to write on water with light. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And you can also hit the bell so that you get notified when I release my videos. And check out theactionlab.com where I have some Action Lab equipment for sale. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.